Hello everybody and welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Well today I'm going to do a little bit different uh, kind of presentation. I uh, prepared this little short uh, slideshow for my radio club over in Rockwall, Texas. Uh, K5RKW is the club call sign. And as some of you know, I'm a kind of a big proponent of uh, FT8 digital mode uh, by Joe Taylor. <clears throat> so I wanted to give this little presentation to the club, uh, kind of to talk a little bit about FT8, and also to talk about a little piece of software that's uh, recently come out called Grid Tracker. Grid Tracker. I'll put some links to uh, Grid Tracker down in the comments after I post this up uh, to YouTube. Anyway, let's uh, get on with the uh, little presentation. Uh, let's see, we got to go down. Make sure I'm over here. There we go. <clears throat> so, for the newbies out there, or oldies that don't know what FT8 is, uh, it's an HF mode or a VHF UHF uh, digital mode uh, developed by Joe Taylor, uh, the JT65 uh, fellow uh, physicist. He's an astrophysicist, a Nobel Prize winner, and uh, he developed this new mode called FT8. Kind of a fast version of JT65. I mean, real fast. 15 second exchange exchanges, for example. It uses uh, his free software, WSJTX, to decode all the text messages in, in uh, canned exchanges. In other words, uh, this new mode is so fast, uh, 15 seconds. And it switches to between receive and transmit, you know, within a second. There's really no way for you to reliably run it manually. Can't, it, can, it cannot be done. <clears throat> and the computer time, of course, has to be set uh, correctly to within a second. So you got to get it down there into about a half a second to get reliable decodes. So you're going to have to download some uh, supplementary software, uh, time server software. I use a software program called Dimension 4 uh, to sync the computer clock very accurately. Uh, I'll put a link to that down in the bottom. Don't worry about that. I'll put links to various things that you may need to get this to work. Anyway, it decodes down to a minus uh, 24 dB, very similar to JT65. Uh, you know, I still feel JT65 is a little bit more sensitive, but this is so sensitive that really any discussion of which one might be better is kind of uh, futile, as they say on Star Trek, you know, <clears throat> uh, uh, this is very, plenty good enough to make multitudes of long distance contacts. Of course, you're going to either need a uh, radio, HF radio, uh, that has uh, sound card capabilities built in, probably already has a USB port on it. Or you're going to need to go out there and get what's called a rig blaster or a signal link, to, uh, which is simply a sound card in a box uh, <clears throat> that you'll use to connect the radio up to the uh, uh, computer and be able to decode these signals. I've got other videos out there to tell you kind of how to do that, so I'm not going to cover that in this video. Let's continue on here now. Uh, so what is Grid Tracker? Well, it's again, it's free software that displays the call sign and the grid location and the transmission paths on a world map that you can zoom this world map in and out. 
uh, depending on propagation so you get a kind of a better view of the grid locations. It's still in development, however, it seems to run quite well, uh, even on my Windows 10 machine, no problem. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to show you something in settings that's very important to get it to work a little later in the presentation, but I uh, haven't really had any problems, and uh, there's already been one uh, update. When you go to the site, and there's the web uh, URL to the site there, so you might want to copy that down. <clears throat> you can kind of read about it, and then there's a link there, uh, uh, you know, for the software. Uh, you'll find two software packages there. One is the full version. And the other is, is the, any patches that the developer has uh, posted up there. So the first time you install this, you need to install the full package first and then install the patch on top of it. Later, all you need to do is go out there and get the patch if he's got a uh, bug fix or anything else he may be doing. Uh, to the software. From then on, all you need is the patch. So, uh, let's uh, jump ahead again. And what does it look like? Well, you're going to crank up your radio. You're going to crank up WSJTX, get it running. And then you're going to start up Grid Tracker. And what it will do as the signals are decoded, it's going to place the... Uh, grid of the contacts on the screen, as you see here. And there is a legend over here that kind of tells you what those colors indicate. <clears throat> and then periodically, it's going to try to show you the path of the contacts on this uh, basically world map. You can zoom in and out with the little controls down here in the bottom and you can set a few parameters here. You can read the uh, manual that's on his website to figure out what these do. They're very simple. For instance, this one changes the uh, width of this line here. And then there's another one now that changes the uh, little squares into a pin a little uh, small pin rather than the big square that indicates the uh, grid. So that's what it does. Uh, it's very handy if you're demonstrating uh, WSJTX and FT8 because they can visually see what's going on with the contacts alive as they happen. So this is the what the free grid tracker software looks like. Now, <clears throat> when I did this, uh, I couldn't run everything at one time. I had to actually get my camera out and take a shot of the screen from close up. It was just too much to run uh, my screen capture along with the flex radio, along with WSJTX, and grid tracker it was too many things running on my machine at one time and it was affecting the time sync so uh, it was really not decoding any signals i had too much thing too many things running so i had to ha basically hand hold the camera and point it at the screen once i get this posted up i'll stabilize the video but if you jump in here real fast you might see my shaky hand on this little video but let me run this video for you here and uh, uh give me uh you know an hour or so to stabilize the video on youtube and then it'll be a little bit better but if you jump in here real quick it's going to be a little shaky but anyway this will give you an idea of uh uh, grid tracker actually uh, working uh, with some live contacts. So let's play this. And we'll just let this video run through. And if you don't want to watch the whole video, you can skip ahead a little bit, but there's a couple of more slides. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, that's enough of that. And uh, the last thing, I actually one of the last things I wanted to show you was there is a little, uh, <clears throat> looks like gears on the main page. You click that and you're going to get this box here. This is very important. I mentioned this in the, whoops, I mentioned this in the beginning of the video. This is very important. You're going to need to set these ports up. And uh, I'm going to let this screen set here a minute so you can kind of write them down. Uh, the first time I installed this, uh, they were there already, but according to his documentation, uh, later they may not be there. And they weren't on another computer that I install this on. So I had to <laughs> come over here and look at it and then copy it down and uh, kind of type in the uh, settings. So you're going to need to set the port 2237. You're going to need to set the IP to 127.0.0.1. And you're going to need to set that port under there to 2238 and click the enable. Everything should be green. That kind of tells you that everything's okay. And then you just simply click the OK button right here once you get these set up up here. So that's very important or it will not. Uh, actually, de uh, you know, decode the WSJTX uh, contacts and plot them onto a map if you don't set this screen up. And again, it's just simply these gears right here. You click this and uh, you get this box. And here's the little icon you click if you prefer a pin that looks like this right here, a little pin rather than those colored uh, boxes. You can change it to a pin by clicking or unclicking this. You can go back and forth. That's really all there is to it, along with the, uh, the grid decay rate and the path width, the line. And you can read the documentation to kind of tell you what these two little set settings do. And then, of course, there's some let's clear the map, you know, of uh, the current decodes and let it do it again. You can clear them with these little buttons right here. And it gives you some other information about what's going on on the screen. So kind of neat. So... I want to kind of conclude this with why you should use FT8 right now, especially. Uh, as many of you know, or some of you may not know, we're in what's called solar minimum right now. There's very few sunspots. So the ionosphere is not very active right now. <clears throat> it's hit or miss. Uh, since this decodes to a minus 24 dB, you can make contacts uh, much easier with this software than you can trying, trying to use uh, phone mode, voice mode, single sideband, or something like that. So during solar minimum, you really ought to experiment with this mode. Also, if you have a marginal antenna, let's say you're in a... HOA, you can't put up a tower, you know, you got some wire that you're running in the backyard or maybe you're using uh, something off the back porch where they can't see it, you know, from the HOA uh, uh, Gestapo folks. Uh, then you want to use, uh, try to use FT8. It'll really help you in making some contacts that otherwise you could not make. And you don't need an amp or anything like that. 35 watts is plenty. I usually run somewhere between 35 and 40 watts or less. Uh, never go over 40 watts. Um, again, you got full key down, you know, for 15 seconds. Really shouldn't overheat your uh, transmitter. It's not it's not for, for a very long period of time, but 
Don't take chances in burning up your final transistors. Just don't run it over about 35 watts and you'll be okay. The other neat thing about this, since it goes so fast, you remember the exchanges are 15 seconds and there's only like a one second delay between the end of one exchange and the beginning of another. So your clock has to be synced uh, very accurately on your computer. And you need to check a few boxes in WSJTX software. We've discussed this in prior videos. So that it basically, once you double click the green uh, indicators, uh, highlights in uh, WSJTX, it takes over and starts uh, running the exchange automatically. So it's kind of very important to get yourself on that automatic mode on WSJTX or you're going to have very great difficulty making contacts. There is a short learning curve with this uh, WSJTX, uh, but it's not anything that uh, just a normal person couldn't overcome. So don't be afraid to experiment with it. Uh, we're kind of used to, uh, those of us that have been running FD8 for a while are kind of used to new people. We see it, we can tell, kind of tell what's going on. Uh, <clears throat> you know, they'll make a contact with us. They'll never answer the exchanges automatically. They'll try to do it manually, which means we'll skip a couple of times time periods before we get a response, we can tell that they're trying to do it manually. So uh, get yourself on the automatic function there. You won't have that problem. Uh, and uh, I do have a video that I posted earlier, and there's plenty of them on the internet where you can go check and see what are the boxes you need to check to operate uh, automatically on WSJTX. Just do a little search. Uh, I've got a couple of videos out there. If I can discover them and put a link to them, I'll do that down in the comments. But you won't have any trouble discovering uh, what the check boxes are uh, on WSJTX uh, that you need to uh, check in order to operate automatically on FT8. No big deal there. So that's about it for today. Uh, <clears throat> really a kind of a discussion of FT8 just a little bit and this new software that just came out that works with WSJTX and plots those uh, contacts and those uh, uh, people that are transmitting onto a map uh, to give you a visual representation of what's going on and where propagation is going to, which is quite helpful if, uh, uh, to know if all of a sudden they're making contacts to Europe or to uh, Asia or somewhere that you'll be able to see it on the map and know that the band is a little bit open. With that said, I wish you clear skies and 73, and as I usually do, remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. Yeah, it's still up there. Y'all be good. Come on back. Subscribe. See y'all later. More videos to come.